Welcome one and all. To our returning traders, we're pleased to have you back. To our new traders, we're glad you found us. Sit back for a few minutes and enjoy the show. As we did last week with the bonus section, we found an opportunity to create an additional moment that is especially beneficial to those who are struggling in the psychology arena. We promise to keep it light, short, and sweet. Your trade psychology should be the most important of the three pillars, with money management a close second and technical analysis a distant third. Let's get busy. We tried something a little different this week. While we used the default settings for the technical analysis, and we did, we also recorded additional data with slower settings to ensure that we show clear signals for those new to the channel. For all you old hand experts, thank you for your patience. This week, we're going to talk about an indicator which is classified as a price overlay, single line cross, baseline indicator. While this indicator was coded in 2012 at the suggestion of a trader, the geometric mean is actually quite old. We're not talking 50, 100, or even 300 years ago. We're talking like 2,500 years ago. The original developer was none other than Pythagoras the philosopher, or pronounced in Greek, Pythagoras, if you're a philohen, also known as a lover of all things Greek. Of course, microprocessors calculating the results in a blink of an eye are much better than the alternative, by hand. Anybody remember these? I had one, passed down from my father, but only used it as a straight edge. I suppose that it was considered a quantum leap from calculating results from the archaic texts back in the days of togas and laurel leaf headbands. When we've concluded the technical analysis portion, we'll make a few closing comments and then quickly jump into the bonus section. We even have a graphic to help explain things. After all, illustrations do make things easier to understand. Thanks to all of you who took time to send us your ideas, suggestions, and even included the indicators with your emails. It's like getting gifts every week. The most difficult thing is how we're going to pick which ones get profiled. BP and I are grateful for the selfless collaboration from our community. Keep paying it forward and hopefully good things will come your way. If you're on the fence, just send in your sublime material. We never turn anybody away. The indicator email address is stonehillindicator at gmail.com. We're going to start the data stream using the default settings for a few seconds before we jump in with commentary. Then we'll bring in the second session. Don't worry, you won't miss it. We'll let you know when we're getting ready to move into the second video clip. Traders, start your engines. Alrighty then, let's pause at this first short signal after that long period of virtually zero market volatility and see where that sleepy price action goes. Well, that was an exceptionally nice run to the downside, lots of pips. I'd have bagged it and headed off to the beach after a trade like that. Let's see what's next. Okay. A small trade with a few pips for your pocket. We'll take it. We've got a short signal next. What will the market give us? We've got a long signal here. The candle is very small, but price did just make it above the signal line. Remember, you can use the data function on the platform to verify metrics. A small run, maybe a few pips depending on your algorithm. Now a short. Price action is a bit flat, which affected this last trade. Small loss, no matter. Record it and move on. Nicely done. Tidy run to the upside here for some profit. Okay, I think we're good here. Now we'll bring in the second data stream with altered settings to slow the reactivity down just a little bit. Let's see how it looks. We'll kick it off from this point. Alright, a nice run right out of the gate. Notice that the slower signal line would have kept you in the trade during that first retracement. And it's time for a quick teachable moment. We're going to examine a close-up of that last signal. In the first image, we notice that the red candle appeared to cross and close above price. Remember that in a bare candle, the top of the body represents the open and the bottom of the body represents the close. So in this instance, price did pierce the signal line but then returned and closed below. So, there was no signal. The next candle is called a doji. This is a situation where the open, high, low, and close are the same value, or close to it. 
In this case, it was on the signal line. No signal here. Had it occurred above the line, then it would have been a long signal. We wrote a blog specifically about the doji candle after answering a question on Quora. The title of the blog is called, What is a Doji? It goes quite deep into the explanation, and I'll bet after reading through it, you will probably be considered an expert in the matter. I've included the link in this video's description if you're inclined to further your technical training. Here, we see a bull candle which is opened and closed above the signal line. This is your long signal. Easy, right? Okay, now that's settled, let's get back to the technical analysis. After a quick price retracement, we got the next signal. That would have made a good trade depending on your exit signal. But remember, baselines are not used as exits. Anyways, you would have put a fat handful of pips in your pocket. All right, we had a quick short and then one candle later, a long signal. Your algorithm would have most likely kept you out of that trade. If you're just testing this baseline as a standalone, you would have booked a loss in your journal. Moving on. A nice run up there. Did you notice the touch and go in the middle of the run? Price touched, but did not cross and close below the baseline, so you would have kept that trade open for recording purposes. Besides, your exit indicator would have probably kept you in for the continued run up. Let's let it run out for a few more seconds and then we'll reflect on what we saw. Baselines. They are the foundations of our algorithms. Some use them after their entry confirmation gives them the signal, some before. In either case, we use them to help identify a trend. Did you find the default version was easier to understand or the slower version? Remember, practice makes perfect. Even printing out screenshots and marking them up with a pencil will begin to provide the training you need to build up proficiency. Now as mentioned, we're going to foray into something of importance. Those two words don't get people very excited. It kind of sounds like homework. We promise there won't be any. What we want to do is point something out. It's kind of a big something that can affect your entire way of trading, no matter what market. Ready? Trading should be boring. That's it. I'm guessing you need a little clarification, and that's a fair request. Okay then, here we go. When many of us started trading, there is usually an inherent rush of emotions as we open and close trades. Elation when we profit and misery when we lose. It's all very normal. However, it can greatly affect our ability to make sane decisions and affect the health of your account. I won't go down that road in this video, but there are blogs on the Stonehill Forex website which do. The takeaway from trading should be boring statement is an image we want to share and explain how it should be burned into your headspace when you are actively trading, whether demo or live, with money at risk. We constantly use the term algorithm. What is it? In simple terms, it is a process which follows a particular set of instructions dictated by binary outcomes such as yes-no, true-false, and using three operatives, and, or, not. Let's take a look at what an algorithm looks like as a picture. There's really nothing complicated. A series of actions represented by rectangles which are connected by binary decisions, yes or no. Imagine this is your algorithm by substituting your favorite baseline confirmation indicators, and the rest of it into those rectangles. To traverse from one step to the next, it comes down to making a simple decision based on the quantitative results of each step. Simply stated, if step one is true, then go to step two. If step one is false, then no trade. From step two to the ultimate step of opening your trade, follow the same logic. There is no emotion in those rectangles, only in your head and in your heart. Make your own diagram on paper and pencil in what you use in your own trading. Make the necessary notes of the trade and whatever you feel is important. Attach it to your trading log and review it. Over time, the mechanics of physically using this tool to help you keep emotion out of your trading will begin to subside as you go through this process over and over. This is how the truly profitable traders become what they are. Trading is just a series of business decisions, nothing more, nothing less. And, as a check mark on the plus side, you suffer a lot less in a losing trade. Is it okay to still celebrate when you win? Absolutely. I do. It's a brief mental high five, a small smile, and a pat on the back. Then it's back to business. Trading psychology is the foremost skill you need to master. It can also be the most challenging. The best thing is that you can control how quickly you master it. Go get it. And that winds up the bonus educational moment. 
We hope it brought a level of awareness into your conscious stream to help you overcome one of the most difficult parts of trading. For next week, VP and I discussed our next choice and we'll be profiling a confirmation indicator, a little bit of an odd one, so continue hanging out with us. Let's resume the show. After watching this video and reading through the blog for additional information, head on over to the resource page where you can download the indicator for free. Once it's installed on your platform, try it for yourself and see how it does on whatever market you're looking at. That's the fun stuff. The link to the library is in this video's description. We received a request for specific financial advice in the past week. You guys know we can't do that. What we can do is help you through the educational lens, and we'll always do our best to steer you right, but just keep that in mind when you write to us. Questions like, should I go long, short, open, close, in a specific trade situation cannot be answered. Those are your decisions, and what we do is empower you to make those decisions. You'll be better for it at the end of the day. We can help you get there. Just head over to the Stonehill Forex website. We've got a lot of free stuff to consume at your leisure, no obligation. There is the resource page with all kinds of tools, affiliate links, blogs of every flavor, and a lavish trading opportunity with Blueberry Markets for non-U.S. traders. Our Bright Star is the only licensed and approved trading course which teaches you the no-nonsense Forex methodology. It took us over a year and a half with VP to put it together from over 80 hours of material and shorten it down to a 10-hour, logical, self-paced course you can complete in a couple of days. Don't forget to sign up for the periodic digest we put out each month. We discuss what's on our project board, highlight indicator profiles, trading items of interest, and everything the trader needs to know. We have one coming up shortly, so watch for that in your inbox if you've signed up. Speaking of signing up, you can sign up right on the website from any of the blog pages or just click on the email list tab at the top of the page on our website. If you want to get last month's digest, email dan at Stonehill Forex with the title, Latest Digest Please, in the subject line. You'll have it within 24 hours. We're also on Facebook answering all kinds of Forex questions on Quora and of course generating more helpful YouTube videos on our channel. Go to the website. We think you'll find something helpful there. Our only goal is to make you a better trader.